Hey guys, my name is Gabby. Welcome back to my channel and today I wanted to do a video talking about some books that I do not think are worth their hype. about a year ago now I made this video called books that are worth their hype and basically what I did was lo I looked through my goodreads for all the highest average rated books and I went through the books that had the highest average rating and if I thought that they were deserving of those ratings then I said that they were worth the hype and so now I wanted to do the opposite where I look at all the highest rated books on my goodreads shelf and I find the ones that I don't think are worth that hype and then I tell you about them in this video. That's how this works. <laughs> but before we do get into the video, I wanted to say a huge thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video because Skillshare is worth the hype. See what I did there? Mm. <laughs> but Skillshare is really great because they have classes for everyone and I'm sure you can find something that you would like. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. If you're anxious, you can explore classes that may help you express what you're feeling through creative self-discovery. If you're uncertain about what's next, a creative challenge or productivity class may offer a helpful structure for setting small goals and feeling a fulfilling sense of accomplishment. And I think that drawing and writing and journaling classes can be a great way to manage stress during this crazy, crazy time that we're in right now. If you find yourself with a lot of free time during this quarantine, then maybe you want to find ways that you can be more productive. And I've been taking a class that has been helping me a lot with this, and it's called Simple Productivity, How to Accomplish More with Less by Greg McCohen. And it's really interesting to learn about all the different ways that you can be more productive by cutting out things that are less essential in your time. Because I always have a habit of wasting so much time when I have nothing going on during this quarantine like this. But I like the idea of having more of a routine and like being more productive so I can get things done. But they also do offer tons of other classes in writing, graphic design, web development, animation, photography, marketing. Like literally if it's anything creative, it's probably there. And it's less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. But the first thousand people that click on the link in my description will get a two month free trial of premium membership so that you can explore your creativity and have something to do during this lockdown. Am I right? I've had a really great time exploring my creativity and trying out a bunch of their different classes during this quarantine because it just really gives me something to do and it gives me something to look forward to. So yeah, make sure you use the link in the description and get your two free months and have a great time in quarantine. So let's just jump straight into the books that aren't worth the hype. I'm gonna be starting with the book that has the highest average rating and we're just gonna go from there. So the first book that I don't think is worth the hype is A Five Minute Life by Emma Scott. This one has a 4.45 out of five on Goodreads, but granted it only does have about 3,000 ratings. So not a lot of people have actually read this book, but I feel like that rating is very high, even for the ones that have. And this book was one of my most anticipated releases because I really love this author, Emma Scott. She's a great romance writer. And this book sounded really interesting because it, it's about a girl who only has a five minute long memory before she loses her memory because she was in this car accident. And the premise was just like everything I needed in a romance. It sounded like some 50 first dates vibes. It ended up being so disappointing and it sucks because part one of this book is really good, I think, and it's deserving of like five stars. But then the second half of this book was just so bad. It was like a completely different book. It just ended up being so disappointing for me and I don't think it's worthy of that 4.45 rating. The second book on this list is going to be Behind the Bars by Brittany C. Cherry. And this one has a 4.35 out of 5 and it's been rated by 6,000 people, so double that of the last book. But this is another one of my favorite romance authors and I was really excited to read this book as well. And this one just ended up being so cliche and so disappointing and I honestly don't get the hype with this one at all. I think this is one of her worst books that I've read from this author because I really do love this author. Like she's written some of my favorite books of all time, but this book has got to be up there as like one of her worst in my opinion. It was just way too cliche. Like these characters were such stereotypes. Like she was like the rich girl and he was like the loser nerd. And it was so like insta love too. It just, ugh, it was not for me. The third book on this list I might get some hate for and that's Culty by Mariana Zapata. This one has an average 4.35 out of 5 and this one has 38,000 ratings. So this one's been read by quite a number of people but 
This one, I cannot get on board with this romance. I do not understand the hype with this romance. And it's crazy because I absolutely love The Wall of Winnipeg and Me by this author. It's one of my favorite books of all time. This one follows this girl who's a soccer player and it's kind of a romance between this guy who's like her coach, but he's also kind of like this huge famous soccer player who stepped down from the spotlight to be the coach of this girl's soccer team. And this main character is just so juvenile. Oh my God, she reads like she's like 13 years old. And I just couldn't deal with it. I just, I didn't like her character. And the guy that she was in love with, like Colty's character, he's such an asshole. Like he's so annoying and like rude. I didn't like it very much and I don't understand the hype. The next one I'm definitely gonna get some hate for because it is The Hunger Games by Suzanne Collins. This book has an average rating of 4.33 out of 5 and it has 6 million ratings. 6 million. That is a lot of people who really, really enjoyed this book because that is a very high average rating. I read The Hunger Games a few years after the hype had started. I read it like maybe a year or two after the movie came out. And I just, I don't understand the hype with this, but this is probably just a me thing because I don't really enjoy young adult dystopian books anyways. I just personally don't get the hype with The Hunger Games at all. Like the concept of it is so weird. Like a bunch of teenagers going and like fighting to the death. It's just strange. I mean, I guess I understand why it's as popular as it is, but I just personally don't get it myself. The next book is gonna be Illuminae, which like, I know, I know. This one has an average of 4.30 out of five and it has 102,000 ratings. So this one's gotten a substantial amount of people that love it too. I don't know, it's been a couple of years since I read this book. So like, I don't know if I'd still feel the same towards it. But when I read this book, I read about like 200 pages of it and then I DNF'd it and I gave it one star. Like I really aggressively didn't like this book. And I thought that the main characters were so annoying and juvenile and just like gave me a headache. But it has been a while since I've read this book because this was the very first book that I read in the year of either 2015 or 2016. I can't really remember, but I just remember like no not liking it at all and I thought the writing style with the like weird text was just like very confusing. The next book is another controversial one but if you're here for the tea then I'm spilling and it is Me Before You by Jojo Moyes. This one has a 4.26 out of 5 and it has 1 million ratings. Everybody be loving this book and I just I can't because in this book Louisa our main character is one of the most obnoxious characters I've ever read about. The fact that she's like 26 years old and she reads like an 11 year old and she's like never thought about her life or her future and she's 26. It's just strange. Like I just, I really don't understand why this book is so popular. I know it's because of like the emotional aspects of it. People just really gravitate towards that, I guess. Like they want to cry, but I did not cry during this book. I was actually kind of pissed off at like the message that this book is sending. It just doesn't seem right to me. I just didn't, <laughs> I don't like this book. All right, the next book is gonna be Eleanor Oliphant is completely fine. And this one has an average of 4.29 out of five and it has 597,000 ratings. This is another one of those books that had so much hype around it right when it was coming out and I think it got picked for like a Reese Witherspoon's book club pick and everybody was just like, oh my god, Eleanor is the most relatable character of all time. And like, yeah, this book was uh, like cute, I guess. It had its moments, but like, I just don't think this book is worthy of all of the hype that it received because I don't know, I feel like this book was just okay, but I feel like I've read a lot of other books that do this kind of story so much better. Like, I just didn't connect with the writing in this book at all and I don't know, I just, I wasn't feeling it. The next one is gonna be The Ghost Rider by Alessandra Torre. This one has an average of 4.20 out of five and it only has 14,000 ratings. So not that many people have read this book, granted, but still, this is one of my least favorite books of all time, I think. I don't even remember if this one's more like romance or thriller. This book was so frustrating. This book has one of my least favorite main characters of all time. I can't even remember all the reasons I dislike this book so much, but I remember having a list. And it was mainly because this book is trying to, like the main thing in this book is that she's writing a book in this book that's kind of like about 
her life and her trauma experiences but then you don't get any answers about like what she's writing about and she's just constantly like talking about her writing without giving you any context to what she's writing and it's really weird and really frustrating and this main character is an asshole to literally everyone in her life and oh my god even just talking about this book again i'm getting pissed all over again it's not worth the hype it's not even worth reading all right and the last book on this list is Love in Other Words by Christina Lauren. This one has an average of 4.22 out of 5 and it has 24,000 ratings. And this one does make me sad because this is another one of my favorite romance authors, Christina Lauren. I just really didn't enjoy this one. This one is this second chance romance novel which is maybe part of the reason why I didn't enjoy it because I usually don't really enjoy that trope anyways. But this one follows these characters who met when they were like 13 and had this very like insta love love and then we also get chapters of them as adults like later in life when they're reconnecting again <laughs> i just didn't like either of these characters very much i just didn't care when i read an adult book like this i don't i didn't sign up to read about 13 year old romance okay and it's a lot of the book like i feel like the 13 year old part of the book took up so much more of the book than i was wanting it to i don't know and then by the time that they were like adults i just didn't really like either of them as adults and i didn't really care about their romance so this is definitely one of my least favorite christina lauren books and i just don't think it's worthy of the hype like if you're gonna read christina lauren go and read the unhoneymooners so yeah those are all the books that i do not think are deserving of the hype don't come from my throat please we all have our different opinions and i respect your opinions if you think these books are worth the hype then i'm so happy for you because I don't. But please let me know in the comments if you do agree with any of these books that I mentioned, if you also feel like they're maybe not worthy of all the hype, and also let me know about some maybe popular books that you think are not worthy of the hype. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching as always, and I will see you soon with a new video.